got a couple of lights that were sent in via Nightcore for review so I thought I'd show both of these together it's the MH10 and MH12 version 2 as per usual just skim through the specs on the box just to give you an idea the emitters on these are identical so it's really the design and the dimensions which I have put up on screen for you you'll notice that the MH12 is a little bit longer there are some other minor differences in terms of the styling and design but both of these are now using the type c connector instead of the micro usb and that is a good sign makes it a much more durable connector just show you the underside of both of the lights and you see the tail cap switch on the mh12 and some of the body areas are a little bit different the knurling there's also a couple of places to put the clip on the 12 where there's just the one on the mh10 and there's also a bit of a price difference with the 12 being a bit more expensive. Emitters are exactly the same on both of these. They have smooth reflectors and there's no difference at all in the beam other than really tiny tint difference between the two. I've laid out the accessories on the table for you so you can have a look. The only difference is you get that additional tail cap cover with the 12. Both 21700 cells but 5000 with the 12 and 4000 with the 10. And as expected, the tail cap design is a little bit different due to that switch mechanism. But the size of these is pretty much the same, almost identical, once you've taken the tail caps off. Just peek down inside with the light and you'll see there's a spring at the top, and that is a good sign. Here's your bundled accessories, the cable, spare o-ring, the tail cap switch cover. You've also got the clip and the wrist strap. Both of these come with an adapter for 18650 or CR123A cells. And Nike will also give you this new tactical holster, they call it. It's made out of this sort of flexible plastic, which is quite a thick material. And this is where you slot the torch into. So you get this instead of a holster. I'm probably not the best person to ask about the tactical side of things because I'm not going to be using a light like that, a torch, pulling it out and putting it back. You'll notice there's a bit of a lip at the bottom and that means once you put the light in there it's really designed to go with the head down versus head up i'll show you that in a sec the plastic adjusts so you can just move that up and down and that clips into place it seems to be pretty secure from what i can see the idea with that is that it can reduce the size so it's not going to move around too much say on your belt just a demonstration now so head down goes into place perfectly and it grips it at the bottom so it's not going to fall out Here's a quick shot on the underside showing it with the lens exposed. Now if you put it in the other way it does kind of go but it doesn't really go down fully because the tail area is just a bit bigger in diameter. So really head down and I'll show it to you on some jeans that I've got here. Fairly wide belt I've got with this so just change the adjuster and that keeps it in place. Stops it moving around too much when you're pulling it in and out. So something a bit different from Nightcore on that. I think it's okay, but some people might prefer a traditional holster because it will cover the entire light, just offers a bit more protection. Also worth noting, if you do put the clip on, that you'll have to rotate that around, although the grooves do push it down so it does sort of slot into place. Testing out unprotected 18650 batteries in this light, and both of them it applies equally just as much because they both have the springs at the top and they work without any problems at all and there isn't any movement that I can detect shaking it around. So that's a good sign you can use this with many batteries and you're not stuck with just the 21700s. Onto the battery voltage check you can just tighten it up on the 10 and that flashes out the voltage. Slightly different with the 12 you need to push both of the buttons at the same time and then it gives you that reading on the side switch. We'll go over the UI on these two and with the 10 it's just a single press on and off. You've just got that one side switch. Push and hold to cycle through the four power levels. If you push and hold it when you're turning it on that takes you to the lowest output. And to get onto the strobe mode with this when it's on or off double press and then you can just push and hold to cycle through the three strobe modes that are included. We'll go on to the 12. It's a little bit different now because of the memory functions. I've put that on screen for you. Once you've pushed the main switch on the tail, you can just cycle the levels by pushing a single press on the side switch, but the daily and tactical a little bit different. Strobe modes are basically the same as the 10, but you only get the normal strobe if you're in the tactical mode. And I'll show you that now how to switch to that. So you just push and hold in the side switch 
and then hit the tail switch once and you'll see it flash out once or twice to let you know whether it's in tactical or in the normal daily mode. Pretty easy to pick up UI on these. The only thing I'm missing is an instant access to the highest and on the 12 you don't have an access to the lowest output. Here's the charging speed for you. So it's coming around about just under 1.4 amps. I have seen it go slightly higher. The charging speeds on these lights are the same that I can detect. So I've just shown you the one there and there was no problems with the termination. User guide I've put on the screen for you in case you want to have a look through that just to clarify some of the points. Next up we go on to the beam shot. So I'll start with the unicorn and that's around about 850 lumens. That's a neutral white LED and on the MH1012 exactly the same beam pattern at 300 lumens. Then we go up to the 1200 lumens. We've got a mixed beam on this probably around about 6,500 kelvins. So I'll run some more beam shots and just give you a quick summary at the end of the video. Just to give you a couple of thoughts using these two lights, I think they're pretty good. They perhaps don't have a big wow factor that some of the lights have, but that doesn't really matter in my opinion. Obvious advantages, you have that Type-C connector, you have the larger battery capacity, simple and easy UI and a choice of two designs. Only real obvious downside to me is the lack of a power output between the medium and high. Say around about six, 700 lumens, that would have been an improvement in my opinion. If you've got any thoughts or comments on these lights, do leave a comment below. And thanks for watching the video. I do appreciate it.